Welcome everybody. Uh, this is going to be our first, uh, uh, it's not first, but uh, it's going to be our second lecture, which is uh, going to be the first introduction to uh, dynamics. And then later on, we look at uh, the different uh, uh, motions where we look at rectilinear as well as the curvilinear. So today uh, we are going to introduce uh, dynamics and as well as uh, rectilinear motion. So let's dive into this uh, dynamics. Uh, dynamics will cover uh, velocity and acceleration, equations of uniformly accelerated motion, and a uniform accelerated relationship between linear and angular motion. We'll look at uh, mass, force, weight, and uh, momentum, right? So we also uh, look at um, Newton's laws of motion and then the principles of conservation of energy. Okay, right. <clears throat> so now let's uh, try to uh, define uh, some of the things. Well, let's look at mechanics in general. Uh, mechanics, uh, we say it uh, in our previous class, so uh, those we made uh, physically. And those were not there still. Uh, this is a very um, introduction, a very good introduction for you to observe because it's like the foundation. So mechanics, uh, mechanics is a study of the state of rest or motion of bodies subjected to action of forces. And then mechanics is divided into statics, which deals with the uh, equilibrium of a body, i.e. either at rest or moving with, constant velocity, okay? Then we shall have uh, another branch which of mechanics, which is dynamics that deals with the uh, accelerated motion of a body. But still, uh, for us, our main focus here is going to be on two dynamics, because I believe in your year one, you're able to have covered statics. So now, let's go to... Um, uh, dynamics, which is divided into two. One is uh, the kinematics, which is concerned with uh, the geometric aspect of motion. And then uh, kinetics, which is concerned with uh, the forces causing uh, the motion. All right, now let's look at application of the principles of dynamics. We apply dynamics in each and every day of our lives, but uh, some uh, significant applications right here, one is in the structural design of any vehicle, such as an automobile or in the airplane. Also in mechanical devices, such as uh, those motors that are working in industries or running machines. Also in pumps, in movable tools, in industrial manipulators and machinery. Also, how we apply dynamics or the principles of dynamics in uh, predictions of uh, motions of artificial uh, satellites as well as projectiles and spacecraft. Okay, so we as uh, we are studying, we are going to be meeting a number of problems in dynamics that we need to solve, but the techniques that we need to adapt that will help us to harmonize and be able to solve uh, these problems. So first of all, um, whenever you are challenged or given a problem for a hand, first of all, read and analyze the problem carefully and try to relate the actual physical situation with the theory you have studied. <clears throat> also, Remember to draw any necessary diagrams and tabulate the problem data if necessary. In the, um, when you guys were dealing with static, um, if you remember very well, you were concerned with uh, drawing what we call free body diagrams. So in every uh, problem that we are given, you always, always go to draw a free body diagram or any drawing necessary to represent either the motion or the different uh, forces 
that are going to result into that motion. Or perhaps now, uh, since we are going to be dealing with kin kin uh, kinematics, then we look at the geometry, then we look at the position and the displacement. So we have to draw those necessary diagrams. Okay. Third, you also need to establish coordinate system and apply the relevant principles generally in mathematical form. Because uh, since we are going to be dealing with some of the geometrical uh, problems, then some may be vectors. So you need to know the points and actually establish those coordinate system. Also uh, solve the necessary equations algebraically as far as uh, uh, practical, then use uh, a consistent set of units. Uh, are they in meters? Are they are they I and J vectors? Um, among others, but complete the solution uh, numerically. Also study the answer using technical uh, judgment as well as uh, common sense to determine whether or not it seems reasonable. Uh, you find an equation, uh, you given distances that are less about uh, five meters and then uh, later on, you ask to either find a stopping distance and then you realize you're having a million uh, meters and that does not sound logical, right? So you have to use your common sense and see that the answers you're getting is reasonable. Again, once the solution has been completed, please review the problem. Uh, I know some people say now, uh, was that time because... I am in an exam that is three hours, and when do I have to go back and review? Right, think of other possible ways of obtaining the same solution to the problem. But this applies before the mastery. Once you get the mastery, then you're good to go. Now, let's get this uh, further. Let's look at into kinematics of particles, right? So kinematics is a branch of uh, dynamics, right? It's a branch of dynamics um, which, de which describes uh, the motion of bodies without reference to the forces which either cause the motion or are generated as a result of the motion. So note, it is often defined as the geometry of motion, okay? Usually uh, defined as the geometry of motion. Right, so where do we apply kinematics? So here we're going to look at the application of kinematics. First of all, in the design of cams, of gears, linkages, and other machine elements to control or produce certain desired motions. Also, we apply Kinematics in the calculation of flight trajectories for aircraft, for rockets, as well as spacecraft. Now, this is very important for us to note. Otherwise, from this stage, you cannot proceed to the next stages because this note is very important. A thorough knowledge of kinematics is a prerequisite to kinetics, which is the second branch of dynamics. So which is the study of the relationship between motion and the corresponding forces which cause or accompany motion. So you need to know the information or the principles of kinematics before we jump into kinetics because kinetics will, will incorporate motion as well as it will incorporate the forces that are causing motion or that bring up motion or come as a result of the motion. Right? Okay. Now, let's start to look at the types of uh, motions that are described in kinematics. Okay. So now here we are going to look at types of motion in uh, kinematics of a particle. First of all, we have what we call the rectilinear. Rectilinear. Uh, here in rectilinear uh, motion, uh, the particle has position the particle has velocity, as well as the particle has acceleration as it moves along a straight line. Then we have the second one. <clears throat> we have a second one, which is uh, the, the curvilinear motion. So this one here, um, in this uh, curvilinear motion, 
the particle has position here, right? It has velocity, okay? As, as well as it has acceleration. But the difference here that this particle moves along what we call a curved line, either in two or three dimensions, right? So that is the difference between uh, the linear and then curvilinear. Okay. So now in this some of these photos, you can see now this is a train, a kind of a bullet train, uh, describing a straight line along a railway path, right? So that kind of motion described by this train, a bullet train, or electric train, it's what we call rectilinear motion, right? Yes, as well as uh, in our next uh, uh, here, you can see a plane uh, trying to circumvent the, the skies and you're trying to see it's trying to form what we call uh, curvilinear motion because uh, the path it's describing is not straight, but in form of a curve. And that is what we call curvilinear motion. Good. So now let's try to go further and talk about uh, lectinear motion. Okay. Lectinear uh, kinematics of a particle, right? Or what we call a continuous motion in a straight line. So there are things we need to note as we are going to uh, study this. First of all, we need to know what does the word rectilinear mean, okay? Because we know kinematics is describing motion without uh, forces in play. That means we are talking about the geometry of, uh, of the particle as it moves. So now we need to know what does rectilinear mean. Rectilinear means straight line, okay? So that's what lectinia means. So lectinia motion refers to movement of a particle along a straight path, okay? That you should know very well. So the kinematics of a particle is characterized by specifying, for example, if a body now moves in a straight line, that means that it is moving from one point to let's say another point. So that means that it needs us to describe certain aspects, for example, from what point does it move to what point does it stop? Or is it continuous? We need to know. So now we need to know the particle's position, but not so, that is P, that's the particle's position. Let's call it P at this point. Uh, and then <clears throat> let's say it is moving with the velocity at this point and this velocity will be V, right? And then it also moves with an acceleration as well at this point. Okay, we moves with an acceleration at this point. Let's call it A. Uh, my mouth is disturbing, so don't worry. So uh, we have an acceleration A and we have an, a velocity V and then it's moving at that point. So let's call this point, uh, this point is P, right? So let's assume this point is P where it moves and then it moves another point. Let's call it P prime. And then we have a velocity. So we are going now to start uh, applying Newton's motion, Newton's laws of motion to describe the new position of this particle, to describe its new velocity, to describe its acceleration, because that's what we are concerned with, with this like, linear motion. Please, let's be very attentive with this. I don't mind the drawings and also the writings. Perfect. Okay, now, um, Let's continue to uh, go into this. Uh, let's look at position of a particle. We say that if a particle moves from one point to another in a straight line, it's going to uh, have a new position. So now if a particle moves from one point to another, uh, there's going to be a change in this position. It can either move uh, uh, front or it can move backwards. Anyway, uh, let's consider this particle at point O here and moves to a new position right here and describes a distance, which is S, right? So perhaps this distance, could, this particle should have gone backwards this side and let's say 
our position S this time would be this side, right? But we realize that this position S would be negative and this side would be positive, right? Because this is moving forward, the other is moving backwards. So the position of a particle is defined by a by positive or a negative distance of a particle from a fixed origin on a straight line. So the position of a particle is what we have as S from the origin. Right. We are going to later on realize that the change from uh, of, this, of this particle distance from point O to a new point is what we call displacement. Later on, this is something that we are going to uh, learn and know, right? So let's look at displacement of a particle. Uh, displacement of a particle, we usually uh, uh, show it as the S. Uh, so displacement of a particle refers to the change in particle's position. For example, if a particle moves from one point to another, uh, another position. So then the displacement, uh, let's say it moves from this origin to this point, and then moves from this point to this point, then this is what we call displacement, right? So the change S prime minus S is what we call the displacement. So then the displacement is the final position minus the initial position. Therefore, displacement is S prime minus S. So now displacement is a vector quantity. Hence, it has magnitude as well as direction, right? So I hope uh, that is very clear. Okay. Now, uh, let's uh, still continue uh, with our lecture. So now uh, let's look at velocity. I know uh, all of us have studied velocity in our physics, so this is not a new term. So now velocity uh, describes uh, the change of uh, displacement with respect to time. So now imagine a particle has moved from, or it's from one uh, original position to a final position, but it has done this in a few of seconds or a few of minutes. So this change over time is what we now are going to bring in as uh, velocity. I remember also uh, those days you guys used to catch rate speed. Uh, those days used to call it speed, whereby speed was the change in distance over time, right? So now if the particle moves through a displacement, right, during a time interval, which we call dt, then the average velocity, right, the average velocity of the particle during this time interval, which is average velocity right here, will be given by the change in displacement over a change in time, okay? So you need to know that, okay? So now if we take smaller and smaller values of the change of dt, which is this is also very small, right? The magnitude of ds, which is the small change in, um, in displacement, right, uh, becomes smaller and smaller. And so, because if you, have a sm if, if you have a small number divided by a smaller number, right, so this becomes smaller and smaller, right? So consequently, the instantaneous velocity, right, that is the velocity at any instant or the instantaneous velocity, Please mark these words. The instantaneous velocity is a vector which is divine, which is defined as v, right? Which is the instantaneous velocity. The velocity at any instant will be given by the limit, right? The limit of ds or over dt as uh, the small change in time tends to zero, right? So you remember this in your pure mathematics where we have uh, our element. Uh, as we changing from uh, uh, we're moving from a small element to another as one tends to zero, then we have that quantity. So meaning that um, our ds dt will be uh, changing or will be getting to what we call ds dt, which is a change in displacement over the change in time. Therefore, uh, V, which is uh, velocity at any instant, will be given by uh, ds dt, whereby ds, we know, is the change in displacement, and then dt is the change in 
uh, distance. So this is the first derivative of displacement. This is the first derivative of displacement. That means that for us to get the displacement, we need to integrate with from your simple mathematics. And so, so that means that for us to get our uh, ds, or oh, we could we could see that our v right is um, dt right uh -huh, is the same as the s right so now for us to get displacement that means that we need to integrate we need to integrate right here and then you're able to get your displacement right so that's for uh, next uh, maybe slides which we are going to see later on so now you note you note here that uh instantaneous velocity means that the rate of change of position right the rate of change of position for a time interval which is very small is almost zero okay so it's almost zero so you need to know uh, that as that point our v a change as the limit here changes the sdt changes at dt ten, 10 to zero then we have our dv being equal to ds dt right and now after getting after knowing that that means that uh, we can now proceed to getting acceleration and so because now we know velocity as velocity and uh, instantaneous velocity being equal to ds dt please that is equation one you have to note it down now let's look at acceleration of a particle so provided that the velocity of the particle is known is known at two points and so let's take this point right so we have this point point o which was the origin and the particle moved to this point right whereby we know its velocity which is v and then it moves to another point, which is point, now this is point two, it goes to point three, which is this point right here. So it means that it has moved again to with another velocity, which is the V prime. So now, because there's a change of velocity and this particle has taken a time, which is the, which is the T right here, right? Change here, the T, that means that, uh, if you have dt right here, that means that this particle has moved with a change in velocity, which is going to be v prime minus v over a given period of time. So now what we have here is what describes acceleration, as acceleration is the rate of change of velocity over a given uh, interval uh, of time. So now, provided the velocity of a particle is known at two points the average acceleration of a particle during the time interval dt is defined as the average velocity right here given as the change in velocity over the change in time which is dv delta okay you call you guys call delta so this is called delta v over delta t but now as this delta changes to dv dt that means that uh, uh this is small and this is very small, but as we apply the limit dt as tends to zero, then our a average acceleration rate will tend to uh, accelerate.